Hey guys, lots gone here today, and welcome to Sim Airport. Now, this game did actually come out last night, that is the 7th of March 2017. And just before we start, I want to make clear that this game is in early access. There are still sort of a few bugs, a uh, few features that aren't in the game. Uh, the tutorial is one of those that isn't in the game, but I have spent a little bit of time actually working with the game myself for the last hour or two after uh, its release just to sort of see how the game works. So I'm going to actually show you how it works, how some of the things work and maybe you could learn from that if you do want to play the game. So we're going to go to the menu and start a new game. As you can see it does say early access release here and when it was released. So we're going to go for a new game, uh, sandbox and career mode I think they're the same thing at the moment, I'm not entirely sure, but both do have money at the moment. So we're just going to go for the sandbox mode in a medium map. And as you can see, random events will be coming to the game later on, and so will this tutorial. So first we'll get in and start the game. So it may look familiar to you, the sort of style of the game. As you can see, we've got our runway up here, and we can see that it's functional. We have our taxiways coming down here. We have our airplane gate, our gate agent desk, the sort of holding area where the passengers will wait to board the plane. The two restrooms are one for when you've passed through security area here and one for before that. As you can see, they do actually have uh, heat maps here. I think it's, so that's the secure one. We can see that the outside area here is actually unsecure. The same is the ticket in and baggage claim and just this restroom but after you've passed through security everything is classed as secure. Now these gates are quite important up the side as well because if you don't have them then the runways aren't classed as secure and when you actually come around to placing things like your, if I can find it, the hangers. So we're going to place a hanger here for now. Uh, when you come to placing things like your hangers and your baggage route and stations then you actually need them to be in a secure area as it says must be placed in a secure area and out outdoors only so the first thing you should probably look at doing when you start up is uh, not expanding your queue is the conveyor lines which are very important so as you can see you have the blue arrows here on the ticketing desks and you have, once we've built that, in fact we're going to go ahead and build that first because it'll be easier to show you after we've built that. So we will place the, we have two builders already, we're going to get in two more and place them down by the delivery section. So as you, as you can see, yeah, it is sort of like a prison architect style where you do have deliveries and you need the deliveries to actually come in for you to be able to build the items or objects that you need building. So we are actually going to get some baggage carousels down here as well. Uh, if you are wondering how to rotate, it's just the R key. That is just the R key on the keyboard. Um, took me probably about five minutes to work that one out. I was pressing a few keys because it's not actually put anywhere in the menus yet. But say, the internet's here for a reason. The community's here for a reason. So I'm telling you. If you want to rotate something, press the R key. You do actually have four rotational directions you can go in, so that's fine. That's exactly what you need. We are then going to get in... I don't think we need anything else for now because we're not actually going to take any offers yet. So if we just play the game at maximum speed, I'll show you the deliveries are coming in here. So we've got paint, baggage carousels, As you can see, you have a percentage over some of the items to show you when they're being built. Uh, the bigger they are, the longer they take, obviously. And everything seems to be done now and built. So if we go into the conveyor lines, this will be easy to show you now. So we have the blue lines on the ticket and desk, the blue arrows, which show something is going outwards. And the pink arrows on the baggage carousels show that something is coming inwards. Now, this is also replicated up here on the uh, baggage routing station. 
and you also have um, connections that these need to be. So as you can see, we need to connect to the ticket desk via the conveyor network and the baggage carousels via the conveyor network. These need to be done in separate, uh, in fact, that's the wrong way. Yeah, these actually need to be done in separate um, areas. So we could go for that and that. Now there are, there are some slight issues with the game, some slight bugs. If you do place down some underground conveyor belts and then demolish them with this tool, which you can go over and sort of do the drag and drop like that and it will demolish it. I don't want to do that right now, but if you do do that, sometimes not all of the underground conveyors do delete and you'll have trouble placing objects over the top of them. So you want to sort of um, look out for that when you are thinking about placing objects down. The other thing is you can't actually place um, objects on top of conveyor lines. So if we did a conveyor line here, for example, we couldn't then put a ticket desk back on top of that if we wanted to expand the ticket in area. So we're going to bring this up round Hmm. I want to demolish that's why that's not working. I was wondering what was happening there. Uh, yeah, so we are going to bring this conveyor round down and we want to connect up here. So if we go for three across there um, I am actually, I don't know how um, how well this actually works if having them go longer actually has any effect at the moment. I know that they have stated that there is balancing issues and other such issues with the game at the moment because obviously it released well less than 12 hours ago and it is still an early access stage. But there's enough content to sort of get the gist and idea of what the game is going to be. I'll show you when we do build some of this and we start to have some passengers come in what we um, actually can do about taking flights and the scheduling and everything like that. The scheduling is somewhat similar to Airline Tycoon if you have actually played that game. Um, just a little bit of a reminder. I, th I think there's a video I've recorded on that that is going up on Wednesday actually. So... If you haven't watched that game and you're watching this video, then check that out that is coming out on Wednesday tomorrow. And that will show you the sort of scheduling of what this is probably going to be in the end to give you a sort of better idea that I can't exactly give you as much in this episode or this let's play uh, first try of this game. So as you can see, we are building those underground lines in here. You can go back to the underground view and see that it is nearly done. We have the lines coming out and there we go. So as you can see, these green arrows here going along represent that it is connected up. We'll pause the game again. And then it says it requires at least one functional hangar with a baggage car. Now we've already built this hangar. Um, in case you didn't know, the hangers, it does tell you in the object menu, but the hangers, or well, it doesn't tell you in the object menu actually, um, they do need to be outdoors only and they do need to be connected to a taxiway, which is this road with the yellow lines on it. You can actually build roads, but you have to research them, which is something that the game has. It does only have six research options at the moment. Uh, Two of these unlock a COO and a CFO, and they will allow you to build loans, multi-lane access, which actually expands the road over here to have more than one lane, which allows for more incoming and outgoing traffic to allow more passengers into your airport and allow you to take on more flights by building more gates, etc. So there's expandability at the moment within the game. It's not just what I'm showing you right now, there's a lot more that is available. Again, road building is something you need. So to build extra roads, you would need the COO, as it says there, and upgraded buses as well. So you can schedule an extra double-decker bus every 30 minutes. 
which would increase again people coming in and out of your airport pricing is something that is quite an important thing it looks like in the game uh, it's down here and you can't actually do anything until you research it but you can charge airlines um, per usage of your runway so every time one of their planes uses your runway you'll receive say $400 at the moment but you could raise that up to maybe $1000 and um, level your money out so you can make a profit instead of relying on them to actually give you money for taking on just the flight and you can also charge them by you can charge them for how much let me just go back there how much you charge airlines to use your terminal per passenger so yeah confuse me a bit there so per passenger at the moment we charge airlines ten dollars so if we have 100 passengers coming through the door we get one thousand dollars now if we up that to twenty dollars for example we get two thousand dollars for every 100 passengers and that again is another way to sort of increase your costs of running the airport the more you expand the more you expand the more you probably want to increase the pricing to keep your staff members getting paid and the running costs of your airport to actually be stable and not go into the red uh, as you can see you can see the total expenses and flight income here so we have the flight ops income of zero staff expenses of ten thousand now that can change when we actually go on airline interest so as you can see we've got a 48.93 airline interest and only four airlines are interested in actually looking to fly from this airport now aero time want a afternoon and a night flight however we can't actually do a night flight because the runway needs to be upgraded with lights so we at the moment we can only take morning and afternoon flights as you can see at the top you have an acceptance bonus which is where you get money for accepting the flight however if the flight is terminated or possibly delayed i'm not entirely sure on that but if the flight is terminated you will get charged sort of around three times that figure which means realistically you're going to lose money hence why the pricing will play a valuable part in the simulation aspect of the game again we've got a morning and two afternoon flights here so we could accept all of them but then we've got a 7,000 termination fee per flight so it's something you should look at um, their primary concerns are airport and runway usage prices and flight cancellations so I think to start with we're going to get in all of these just to sort of show you what happens um, I don't really want to build anything down here for now we have a security detector and an ID stand another thing you need to get in is queues as well because otherwise um, it does become a big pain when passengers come in and they literally just flood the airport at the start if you don't have queues so we'll get a, another queue in here we'll take this all the way around security needs to be a very long queue I think because we're going to be having double the amount of passengers coming from here to security now you probably would want to expand security at some point which you can do using the uh, foundation tool, wall tool sort of expand it out there but then again you'd have to hire more security and build more stuff so you, you want to probably do that when you're taking on more flights and have more gates so if we play the game and take it off queuing we'll go into the status and see that we are actually a fully functional airport we have drop-off zone pickup zone delivery zone restroom and ticketing zone scheduling wise this is what i was talking about in the uh, similarities to airline tycoon the way you have to schedule your flights so we do have this flight coming in at 4 a.m to 5 a.m i believe and then we have the two think that might be a bug the arrives and departs but that's not a major issue it's just going to be a text fixed and 
yeah, as I was saying, we do have the two afternoon flights as well. So we have uh, the noon flight to 1 p.m. And then we could move that to there, for example, but it would cross over with that flight. So we do want to leave sort of a gap to make sure we don't have any crossovers. We also need to make sure that the amount of passengers coming into the airport doesn't overflow too much if we have back-to-back -back flights all the time and not enough ticketing or security to keep up with it because that means some passengers might not actually make their flight or the flight might be delayed or you could get a termination fee and it's all about sort of managing that aspect of scheduling everything but at the same time making sure you have enough of everything to actually run a smooth business of running well yeah, run a smooth business and keep a flow going of passengers through your airport and into the gates onto the planes without getting fined by the airlines. So if we do play the game now, put it into five times speed. I think it will be tomorrow morning that they, yeah, it will be tomorrow morning at 4am when people come in. So for now, we could get in a... Just some benches for when they do come in so they can sit down. Uh, again, we can rotate with the R key. Get some more in here. We will then chuck in... We, we can build a cafe, but I've not actually tried doing that yet. So I don't want to try doing anything in this episode that I haven't tried just in case I well I don't know how to do it and we messed something up and it looks like the game might be broken but actually it's just me not understanding how to do something um, again there's a lot of stuff for the kitchen and cafes that we do actually have that we can expand on which is quite good actually and something I didn't look at. The other thing is the ticket and kiosk. So you can actually um, get in a ticket and kiosk. In fact, we'll actually get one in up here. So you can actually get... I'll, I'll get two in. You can get a ticket and kiosk. And it means that any passengers coming in without luggage can go through a sort of self-checkout experience and um, sort of check themselves in and walk through security without holding up the queue for the ticket in over here. So as you can see already, we have some passengers coming in for the flight. And there's a hell of a lot more passengers that time. Um, some of them do queue, some of them don't queue. Again, like I said, a lot of people come in and if you don't have enough kiosks to start with, or even ticketing areas, um, you can easily get overcrowded. So, if we look at getting in a few more of these as well we seem to be doing okay the bags seem to be going out there's a lot of people coming off the actual plane this time we do need to get some janitors in for the restrooms again if there is any performance issues with the game it is early access you may have just seen it uh, freeze a little bit there but as I said I, I am currently recording audio video playing the game on a good quality um, graphics actually if I can show you so we do actually have the fastest mode which will change the graphics to slightly pixelized as you can see However, I wanted to show you with the good graphics on. So we'll go back to that. And as you can see, the graphics have improved there. Obviously, if you don't have a, a good PC, don't try and play on the highest graphics setting because this will be very uh, CPU intensive as well due to the simulation aspect of every guest. If we do pause the game, you can see just how detailed the guests are in themselves. So as you can see, every guest does have a rest stat, a hunger stat, a bladder stat, an information stat, a life cycle departure stat. Not really sure what those mean. Um, again, 
They then are affected by the environment of your airport. Obviously, how good it looks, how noisy it is, how busy it is, if there's anywhere to sit down, if there's anywhere to eat, for example, having a cafe in that helps with their hunger and the environment. Uh, cleanliness as well. So is your airport clean enough? Uh, frustration, are they waiting too long in a queue? Is their flight getting delayed? Is there nothing to eat? Are the toilets busy? Are the toilets messy? And boredom again, is there sort of nothing to do once they've got through and they have to wait for, say, five hours for their flight and they just have to sit on the same uh, bench once they've gone through security, for example, here, and there's nothing to eat or drink and there's only a toilet to get access to. So I don't actually think there's anything at the moment that is like a um, an arcade or something like that. Uh, again, there's the flight informations and vending machines, so it, they make passengers happier. Um, electronics vendings make passengers happier. Okay, so I think they... I think they um, actually vend out electronic products, I'm guessing, to keep the passengers entertained whilst they wait, which I haven't actually seen before. So we have the drink, food, and electronics vending. So you can go for them if you don't want to build a cafe to start with. So in fact, we're just going to go for that to start with, sort of see how it works. Uh, Again, we do have the extra runway stuff like that. refrigerators all for the cafe. Storage shelf with the delivery zone, it will help with that. So we can actually get in a sort of, um, instead of having the deliveries on the side of the road, we could get in maybe a delivery block here and put some storage shelves in. Uh, again, trees. Trees are nice at the start of the airport. They will help with the environment factor. Uh, the drop-off areas and the pickup areas can be increased to actually increase the sort of demand that you have of passengers coming in and out of your airport. Again, the kitchen, you have things like pizza oven, your kitchen storage, kitchen sink, uh, garbage bins, you'd probably want to put them around your airport to make sure that people aren't uh, dumping their rubbish on the floor. Decorative plants, I think they're all, uh, no, some of them are outdoors only, some are indoors only. So again, helps with the environment, will actually increase the happiness of the guests. Uh, cash registers are for cafes, cafe tables, everything like that. And you can get sort of the body scanners and I don't know if that affects um, passengers' happiness if they feel more safer if you've got a body scanner instead of just a metal scanner. But, you know, there's there's more, there's not a lot in the game at the moment, but there's areas that you can actually start a sort of start to see where the game is going and where it will go in the future again things like an atm five dollars per transaction will help keep you afloat and makes passengers happy because they can get money out to spend on things like your cafe so you're going to be earning money off the atm and the cafe and also increasing your guests happiness which is sort of a win-win situation for you However, you've got to accept the fact that it costs 2000 to give and then you've got to pay the wages of the people that work in your cafe and the people in the kitchen as well. So, you know, it's all about managing your money and a typical sort of management simulation game. We do have the reports. So I already showed you the secure areas report. Um, we have the environment heat map. So I think green... I think at the moment our environment is all good. I think maybe blue shows that it's very good. I did see that on the last one when I put in some uh, knowledge emitting objects having passengers. So yeah, I did do that last time. I put in some flight boards here and it, it turned to red. So we could, we could show you that actually. Might as well show you that whilst we have time. Uh, if we do check in some flight information screens just there and just there, we can then fast forward the game. We seem to have a steady flow of people coming in and out. No one seems to actually be queuing in the queue. I know when no one's queuing in the queue. Rookie, I actually forgot to tell you this. Um, right, so if you do have the 
um, ID checksum, for example, you'd want to assign that to this queue. Otherwise, everyone stands in front of it like a herd of sheep, and you get a bit messy and confused, and they all get irritated, and you lose out on stuff. Um, again, for the ticketing areas, ticketing desk bag. Okay, so uh, ticketing desk. Again, you want to assign that to this queue, and you want to assign this to that queue. That will then help people queue. You'd probably want to do the same for the kiosks as well, but considering we haven't got as many people going to them and we've got five of them at the moment, it's probably not a big issue. Um, you could actually make one queue and assign all of them to just the one queue. Haven't tested that, but it could be something you could try to save you making five separate queues. Uh, so yeah, as we can see, we've built the flight information areas now. And if we do go on the info heat map, well, the environment heat map actually is turned red. So maybe I have a feeling they don't like the red or they don't like the blue. Not entirely sure on that. That could be something that needs to be cleared up maybe somewhere. Um, Again, the information heat map doesn't really give me anything for now. As you can see this time, we have loads of people actually waiting in this queue, but it's too big, so we'd probably want to build some more ticketing booths there. But anything else I can really show you is just the zoning areas. So obviously we have the baggage claim down here that we've already zoned. Um, this is sort of the pre-built medium map that is already zoned for you. So it's sort of a tutorial in a way, but obviously it doesn't talk you through it step by step. Hopefully by watching this video you would have gained some knowledge of how to actually um, work some of the features of the game and get a working airport for yourself. See, as I was saying, the um, cafe is something we could zone, so maybe we'd want to zone a cafe here, I don't know. Or maybe we'd have a kitchen on the back of that here. Again, it's your choice if you want to expand into something else. We could have two separate security areas if we wanted to. Maybe one going in, one going out to make sure that anyone coming off a plane is actually going through a secure area. And I think the only other thing to show you is the flooring so again improves the environment maybe we'll just get a carpet in the lounge area and maybe just some sidewalks along here so as you can see that will start to go in the environment heat map will Improved, maybe. Not entirely sure. But the guest, I know the guest happiness does actually improve with the introduction of, um, say, nicer areas like that. Uh, future features I would probably want to see in the game is sort of like a, a VIP lounge area where having a carpet and sort of exotic seats or sort of leather seats, executive seats, would help boost the quality of that you could probably charge more for the food in there and have a restaurant instead of a cafe something like that um, duty free shops is probably something they've definitely got on the list and I can tell you for sure that will be a big bonus in helping to balance the game and helping to sort of give the, air, the, give the airport a sense of life and uh, just being able to expand it into a vast area instead of just having gate areas with seats. However, you do sometimes see that small airports start off with just sort of gating areas. I know that when I was in uh, Sweden last year, I went to a small airport in Sweden and there was only the one duty-free shop and one cafe within the whole building. After you'd gone through security, you couldn't actually have access to the cafe. There was just one bar and... It does show that some of the smaller airports don't actually have 
the um, facilities available to them that larger airports do have. So maybe that is what they're trying to go for here, that sense of realism, and then they can build it up in the future. I'd probably like to see that. I'd like to see in the career mode, maybe you start off at a small airport and then you could take over, say, a big airport that's already got all those features and it's a bit of a management change and you have to adapt to that. I think that'd be quite interesting seeing how you could adapt from the small airport to the large airport because I've got a feeling that the way you go about handling the airport would change drastically because you'd have to expand very quickly and sort of schedule your flights a lot more um if you say if you've only got the one gate you find scheduling your flights if i show you you find schedule scheduling your flights just sort of here and there and you know you've only got these here and there if you've got say five gates you've got to make sure you've got runways that planes can land on and they don't crash into each other because then you could have a termination fee or a plane could not be able to take off and you'd have a problem there and again a termination fee so i think the the bigger the airport the longer it goes on you'd probably come across more of those problems and it would make the game a lot more interesting so what I'm, what i'm trying to say is i understand they've got plans for this game there's not a lot actually um content wise that you can do at the moment that i've sort of got into i'm sure i'm sure you could actually um increase your airport rating and get all of these in you could build more gates i know you can build more gates um build more runways you can have different size maps this is the medium size map i just want to point out so this is not the largest map in the game this is the smallest map in the game so far so don't start thinking well i'm going to build an airport on that i've not got a lot of room to build five runways there don't worry about that they do have extra large maps in the game already that you can build on if you want to. Just bear in mind that you have uh, 250,000 to start with and gates cost, I think, about £30,000, which is a lot of money, so you don't really want to expand too quickly. Again, I think there's a possibility to sort of have... Um, you could probably get a good, a good few games out of the current build. Um... I could probably look into doing a series on this game on the current build. I think I'd probably get about 9 to 10 episodes out of it. Possibly more. Um, I don't know how far it could go in the long future when you have the research of multi-lane access and finance and pricing. I mean, the multi-lane access could bring in three times the amount of people, which means you've got to schedule three times the amount of flights and expand your airport to three times the size. So I guess there's, there's still... I was probably wrong in saying... the the game doesn't have as much content at the moment because it grows in content the more you play it. The The more time you put into the game, the more content you're going to get out of the game. I think that was what I was trying to say anyway. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I haven't covered based on the game. The only thing is the status tab, which I haven't covered. Again, you can see... Your flights actually arrived at 4 a.m., departed at 6 a.m., and the status is departed. You can see that for tomorrow and yesterday. See when your flights are scheduled. So every day we do have a flight scheduled for the same airline, and that means we have a constant income. Again, as you can see up here, we have 8,500 coming in per day, I think. Yeah, daily cash flow estimate, so that is per day plus the runway usage and we are currently losing just 1,900 so if we look to in increase our runway with lights and getting some more morning flights we could actually make a profit quite easily at the moment however I think the balancing issues have been mentioned and I definitely think once you build another gate and hire more staff you're going to have to take in more flights and the balancing will level itself out. So I don't, I don't really see the balancing being too much of an issue at the moment. I think the only current thing that would be an issue is sort of having this sort of um, duty-free shops and different areas like that or possibly uh, different airline ticketing areas like you have in real airports. So this would be 
sponsored by, say, uh, Sparkjet. So Sparkjet sponsor here. Starflight have this area sponsored and Union Air have this area sponsored. And their flight passengers only come to these particular desks. I think that would really help with the management aspect as well. But anyway, guys, I am going to leave it there today. I'm really excited to play this game. I probably sunk about an hour or two into it before I filmed this video, just working over how it worked and getting to grips with it. I do like the style of it. I think it's definitely going to go somewhere. Considering it only came out yesterday, I think they only spent probably about a month from it being greenlit to releasing it, which is extraordinary, really. It's quite an achievement to do that. But, yeah, the game is going to go somewhere. It's going to be a good game. I can assure you of that. It's got good background already. Yeah, it might have some bugs here and there, but games have that when they're in early access. And if you don't stick through it and you don't support the team that is developing the game, you're not going to get the game that you want at the end of it. So if you do like this game, I'm going to leave the link to it down below in the comments. I'm also going to leave a link in the description and a link to their website as well if you want to go and check them out there. I don't think there's anything else I will cover today. If you do want to see a series on this, please leave a comment to let me know because it is something I'll consider, but I only want to consider it if there's enough interest because I have actually got uh, three other series coming up this week that are new and trying to fit this series into that schedule may be a bit of a problem but so if you guys want that i'm sure i can fit it into this schedule there is one space available for another series we currently have six there would be one space available for a seventh if you want this to be the seventh then please let me know so anyway guys i am going to leave it here today i have been lots gone this has been sim airport and until next time thank you for watching